So for this problem, we have a cube. Uh, I should mention that this is problem number 32 in chapter 24 of Sir Wayne Jewett, uh, the ninth edition. This is problem number 11 for my students. Um, this we have we have a cube whose length is L on all sides, and then we have six different electric fields coming in and out of the cube. So for me, E1 is 33.6. Newtons per coulomb, E2 is 29.4. I'm going to call this bottom face E3, which is 15. And then the other three pointing outward are all 20 Newtons per coulomb. So the question is, uh, find the net electric flux through the cube. So the electric flux, the net electric flux, is simply the flux through the first surface plus the flux through the second and so on through the flux to the 6, add up all the fluxes. So what is flux? Um, uh, we know it's the integral of E dot dA, but because the electric fields going into each of these is uniform, is constant, and the area is constant, this guy just becomes E times A. Okay. And the area for my particular cube, well, all cubes, is... Um, uh, the area of each face is just going to be L squared, and for me, my L happens to be 1.04 meters. So if we square that, we get 1.08 squared meters. All right. Um, next, we want to look at uh, what these fluxes are for each different surface, and so bear with me, I'm just going to write them out. This is Oh, and I should I should mention that it is e dot a. This, these are vectors e dot a, right? Um, if all of the electric fields were pointing outwards, or all of them were pointing inwards, then we could maybe make some assumptions. But here we have a um, a couple of them. E one and E two are both pointing into the box, and the rest are all pointing out. And so, why does that matter? That matters because if the electric field, let's take E one for example, looking at the side. E1 is going into that area there, okay? But the area of that side is pointing outwards. Areas always point out away from the surface. So here, this dot product E dot A is going to be um, is going to be minus because the angle between E, you have to draw it, and A is 180 degrees, and so the dot product. E dot A is E A cosine theta, and cosine of 180 is negative. So for E1, this is going to be, you know, the flux 1 is going to be E1 dotted into A, which is going to be minus E1 A, where these are magnitudes now. Okay, so if we analyze that, the only two negative fluxes are going to be the top flux, and here this one on the right-hand side. So this is going to be um, E1 dot A plus E2 dot A dot A plus E3 dot A. Am I going to run out of the room? It's like watching paint dry. I apologize. Of course, you can, hopefully, you have this on high speed so you can zip through these. Okay. The A's are the same in all of them. This E1, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull out my A's. I'm going to go ahead and just skip a step here. This E1 dot A is going to be negative because it's going in and the area is pointing out. So this is going to be minus E1. Again, I pulled the A out. E2 is also going to be minus because it's going in to the board, but then all of the rest, E3, 4, 5, and 6, are all pointing outwards. So that's E3. Okay. And now we can just plug in numbers. Um, 1.08 square meters. We already did that calculation. Um, negative E1. My E1 is 33.6. E2 is 24.9. E3 
e3, I'm going to call this bottom one down here e3, plus 15 newtons per coulomb, I'm sorry, I'm running out of space, plus, and then the rest are 20, 20, 20, 20. So, when you add all those up, noting that these are negative, right, you get 16.5 newtons per coulomb positive and so when you multiply it out this is the total net flux it's going to equal 17.82 newtons per coulomb or newton uh, newton meter squared per coulomb sorry okay and so when we type that in let's see if that works 17.82 Okay. Now to find the net charge on the inside, remember the net flux is equal to this E dot dA, but as we found out, as we did a lot in the, in the um, upper problems, the problems one through whatever, we also know that the flux is Q enclosed over epsilon naught. Okay. And so the uh, charge enclosed, the net charge inside the cube is this Q enclosed. So to find that, it's just equal to the net flux times uh, epsilon naught. Yep, times coulombs. And uh, when you do it out, it's 1.58 times 10 to the minus 10 coulombs. Remember, um, epsilon is, uh, well, it may be worthwhile pointing out again where this epsilon is. Maybe you uh, haven't watched the first part of the video, but this epsilon naught is the vacuum permittivity, as the AP likes to call it. I prefer the permittivity of free space. But there it is, 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 coulomb squared of newtons per meter squared, newtons times meter squared. All right, and so we type that in, and this is just straight e to the minus 10. And could the net charge be a single point charge? No, it cannot. And if you think about it, you know it can't be, because if it were a single point charge, then all of the electric field lines would be pointing in the same direction. They don't all have to be the same value, but they should all be pointing in the same, you know, they should all be either going in or they should all be coming out. So we know it cannot be a single point charge. All right.